Hello, welcome people. In this video, we want to look at the candidiasis lab diagnosis. So basically in our lab, uh, this uh, SDA agar was used to grow candida and this is how it looks. Uh, creamy white pasty colony. So basically uh, this is just one of it. Let us look at the complete lab diagnosis of candidiasis. First of all, you have to collect a specimen, then you can do direct microscopy. In direct microscopy, you can see gram positive budding yeast cells with pseudo hyphae. Pseudo hyphae you can see. Wait, let us retrieve that diagram from our lab again. This is uh, the diagram from our lab. <clears throat> so you can see in direct microscopy all this. Just let's give you some more details. Depending on the site of infection, what specimens you will collect. First, let's look at the specimens. Okay. So specimen collection. <clears throat> You can collect uh, mucosal patch, nail scraping, sputum, blood, urine, etc. A lot of things can be collected, right? Mucosal patch, the white mucosal patch. Vaginal discharge can you collect? Skin, <clears throat> nail scraping, skin scraping, nail scraping, nail scraping. Then sputum, urine, blood. Obviously, because this candida can infect almost everything on earth. So, you can collect all these specimens, guys. Coming to direct microscopy, you can see gram staining reveals gram positive oval budding yeast cells with pseudo hyphae. So, basically, you can see here that it looks almost like staphylococci, right? But staphylococci will not have this kind of continuity like how you're seeing here. This is pseudo hyphae, okay? So basically what you can see in pseudo hyphae, the septa are constricted, the origin of branches are constricted and septate, it grows by budding, okay. True hyphae there will be no constriction, let us show you that also, true hyphae how it will be. Have you seen this, this diagram, this is pseudo hyphae, you can see constrictions and true hyphae there is no constrictions, right. This is because of budding. This is apical elongation. This is pseudo hyphae is because of budding and uh, hyphae, true hyphae is because of apical elongation. Let's take this diagram also and put it in our lab diagnosis because when the lab diagnosis question comes, then draw even that diagram. This diagram also you can draw. They'll be very happy to know that you know the difference between hyphae and pseudo hyphae. Okay, shall we move on to the next point here? Direct microscopy, we are done. Gram positive oval budding yeast cells with pseudo hyphae. Write the difference if you want between pseudo hyphae and hyphae. Culture. So now we are going to culture. Specimens can be inoculated on SDA, that is abroad dextrose agar, with antibiotic supplements because so that the bacteria won't grow. And then you will incubate at 37 degrees centigrade. Candida can uh, also grow in bacteriological culture media such as... Uh, blood agar so you can even grow on blood agar so sda agar you can grow blood agar you can grow don't just write sda they will not be happy you should write sabo routes dextrose agar i have a feeling there's an a here sabo sabo routes is it yeah i think i'm late let's check the spelling okay the spelling is s a b o u r a u d s a b o sabo u raud sabo u rauds dextrose agar okay and you can grow it on blood agar also just remember here you have to put antibiotics so that the bacteria don't grow correct you have to supplement it with antibiotics and at 37 degrees centigrade this will grow what creamy white pasty pasty colony pasty 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 colony candidiasis okay colonies these appear within uh, one to two days and they are described as creamy white smooth pasty with typically typical yeast odor wow they have yeast odor also yeast odor they will have they will grow within one to two days okay similar like bacteria only gram staining of the colonies show 
gram positive budding yeast cells with pseudo hyphae except for uh, glabrata which does not show pseudo hyphae so glabrata does not show pseudo hyphae candida glabrata does not show pseudo hyphae okay so this is the direct microscopy you can uh, also take these colonies and uh, examine in gram positive uh, stain gram stain and you will see this okay then moving on to test for species identification identification now we are here guys test for species identification are you ready good so let us look at tests for species identification so here you have the germ tube test this is important they have asked this in the exam so pay attention here for germ tube test this germ tube test or renolds proud phenomenon has been asked in the exam okay they asked this in the exam renolds b r a u d e proud phenomenon they asked this in the exam so pay attention here to germ tube test which is specific for candida albicans the colonies are mixed with human or sheep serum okay you will mix them with human or sheep serum and incubate for 2 hours wet mount preparation is examined under microscope germ tubes are formed described as long tube like projections extending from yeast cells it differentiates it is differentiated from pseudo hyphae as there is no constriction at the origin i think we have to draw this and show it to you hold on so we just drew it what exactly they have shown in the photograph some kind of there is no constriction at the origin this is the germ tube test for candida albicans it's positive so basically what happens here the colonies are mixed with human or sheep serum and incubated just for 2 hours then a wet mount preparation is examined the germ tubes are formed they described as long tube like projections extending from yeast cells see long tube like projections uh, the thing is uh, how do you differentiate from pseudo hyphae there is no constriction in the beginning so one yeast cell another yeast cell but there is no constriction between these two there is a long tube that's all right that's not difficult you understood right guys did you understand the germ tube test or renolds broad phenomena you will have to explain this in the exam try to draw a pseudo hyphae diagram like this one <clears throat> this is pseudo hyphae but in germ tube test this is how from yeast cell there will be long tubes coming out okay so this is positive germ tube test or candida for candida albicans renolds broad phenomena draw these two and explain to them what you are trying to explain they have asked this in the exam <clears throat> coming to dalmo plate plate culture for chlamydospore production let's look at this one now dalmo plate culture for chlamydospore production now we are moving on in the lab diagnosis guys on cornmeal agar you can identify the species because candida albicans produces thick walled chlamydospores we'll see if there's a diagram for this wheat look at this diagram so this is showing thick walled uh, chlamydospores okay on cornmeal agar dalmo plate culture i think it's very difficult for you to remember all the words in this right it's quite complicated only just remember some thick walled uh, chlamydospores are produced by candida albicans on cornmeal agar this name only is dif difficult dalmo dal mau plate culture okay now let us move on to the next one here uh, chrome c h r o m chrome agar okay are you okay for this so guys we are currently where in this one chrome agar okay what we read about it there's a diagram here we have drawn for you to understand on this chrome agar the different species of candida will produce different colors candida albicans is producing light green okay that's all we have to say about chrome agar different candida species produce different colored colonies on chrome agar now take a deep breath and wake up <sighs> very good see now we are just moving on here guys growth at 45 degree centigrade remember candida albicans grows at 45 degree centigrade and candida dublinensis does not grow at 45 degree centigrade okay candida dublinensis does not grow at 45 degree centigrade candida albicans grows at 45 degree centigrade last sugar assimilation test and sugar fermentation test 
So basically, uh, you can again differentiate between the various species of candida with uh, sugar assimilation and sugar fermentation. Then molecular methods such as PCR, uh, you can use for uh, uh, species specific, you can know for species identification, always PCR is very, very powerful. So we are done for species identification. So what and all we saw in species identification, germ tube test which is positive only for candida albicans and also it is positive for Candida dublinensis and Candida dublinensis. Okay, so it's positive for Candida albicans and pos and Candida dublinensis. Then you have the Dam Dalmau plate culture where you have the production of chlamydospores so for Candida albicans. The walls will be thick for these chlamydospores. Chromagar, we saw that on Chromagar, different species will produce different different color. Candida albicans will produce this light green color. Okay. Oops, why does it jump there? Okay, then growth at 45 degrees centigrade is positive for Candida albicans. Candida dublinensis does not grow at 45 degrees centigrade. You have sugar assimilation test and sugar fermentation test to differentiate the species. And also you have molecular methods such as PCR to differentiate the species of Candida. So we are done with the test for species identification. Now let us continue with lab diagnosis and see what is next. Next is immunodiagnosis guys. So, so far what and all we saw specimen collection, direct microscopy, test for species identification. Next we have to look at immunodiagnosis. So, you will have what and all antibody detection, antigen detection, right? That only you have to do. Antibody detection against cell wall manin antigen. This is so complicated. Various formats like ELISA latex agglutination tests are available for detecting serum antibodies against cell wall menin antigen. Cell wall is what that glycoprotein only, right? So there are a lot of techniques to detect the antibody like ELISA latex agglutination test. Okay. Then you have antigen detection. Antigen detection um, such as you can detect the cell wall menin antigen itself, right? And cytoplasmic antigens. Again, you will use what? ELISA. Not difficult, right? Now moving on to enzyme detection, you can detect the enzymes which Candida produces like aspartyl proteinase, remember? Then you can also detect the metabolites which Candida produces like mannitol, arabinitol, all these uh, metabolites also it produces, okay? So let's move on now to a word on the treatment. So treatment, remember, topical azole is for cutaneous uh, candidiasis. And uh, fluconazole for vulvovaginal candidiasis. Look at this. Fluconazole is for vagina, vulvovaginal candidiasis. For disseminated candidiasis, you can use amphotericin B. Fluconazole, don't forget the name. So in this video, what at all we have seen, let us recap. We started off with the lab diagnosis of candidiasis. We saw specimen collection. That is, you will collect the mucosal patch, skin scrapings, nail scrapings, sputum, urine, blood, all of it you can collect. Direct microscopy, you saw that it will be gram-positive oval budding yeast cells with pseudohyphae. Candida glabrata does not show pseudohyphae. Culture, you will do on sabu raud dextrose agar. It produces creamy white pasty colony. You have to put antibiotics so that the bacteria won't grow and at 37 degrees centigrade it will grow in 1 to 2 days. Yeast odor, it will have yeast odor. You can also grow on blood agar. Then we saw for identification of species, positive germ tube test or the Reynolds broad phenomena where uh, you will uh, add the human or sheep serum to the colonies and incubate for 2 hours. You will have a wet mount preparation and uh, examine under the microscope. So you will see germ cubes are formed. No, sorry, germ tubes are formed. Germ tubes are formed from the yeast. But the thing is, there will be no constriction at the uh, initial part. What is that called? No constriction at the origin. Okay. Dalmau plate culture, uh, we saw this. In this what happens, um, the candida albicans, they produce thick chlamydospores. This is on cornmeal agar. Remember this germ tube uh, test is positive for candida albicans and also for candida dublinensis. 
When we saw chromagar, on chromagar you can see different species will form different colors. Candida albicans will form light green colony on chromagar. Then you saw that at 45 degree centigrade, candida albicans will grow. But candida dublinensis will not grow at 45. So all these features you can use to differentiate the species. Then you have sugar assimilation test and sugar fermentation test. Then you have molecular methods such as PCR to differentiate the species, which will go at the gene level, the DNA level and check. Then we saw immunodiagnosis. We saw that you can detect antibody or antigen with ELISA, etc. Enzymes you can detect, aspartyl proteinases, etc. Metabolites also you can detect like mannitol, arabinitol, etc. Then we had a small word on the treatment of candidiasis. So uh, there you should remember topical azoles and fluconazole. So what and all we have seen in candida? In candida, we have seen uh, what exactly candida is, the species, that is the albicans, glabrata, dublinensis. These three are important, guys. Let's change exactly what is important. You need to know albicans, glabrata, and dublinensis. Remember, dublinensis will also be positive for germ tube test, but it will not grow at 45 degrees centigrade. Glabrata, what you saw? What were the features of glabrata that you saw? Glabrata we saw somewhere, no? Go here and check again. Glabrata. What was special? Candida glabrata does not grow pseudo hyphae. Okay, Candida glabrata does not show pseudo hyphae. So that was the difference. Just write that here. Candida glabrata, no pseudo hyphae. Okay, Dublinensis, positive germ tube test. Okay does not grow at 45 degree centigrade. So those are the things that are different about Dublinensis. Okay. Pathogenesis, we saw predisposing factors, immunocompromised people. Virulence factors, we saw that they have adhesins, enzymes, toxins, pseudohyphae, phenotypic switching, phenotypic dimorphism, all that we have seen. Then Mucosal candidiasis, these are the clinical manifestations. We saw the mucosal candidiasis, that's the oral thrush, vulvovaginitis, denture stomatitis, um, etc. Then cutaneous candidiasis, you saw that uh, intertrigo, intertrigo because of tight underwear, etc. Then you have in the web spaces, you have some uh, er erosio interdigitalis blastomycetita. Then uh, nail up. Paronychia, you have diaper candidiasis, perianal candidiasis, so many things you have. In mucosal candidiasis, one more word you can write easily is esophageal candidiasis. Okay, write all this. Intertrigo, don't forget this word, intertrigo. Okay. Then we saw invasive candidiasis, we saw it will affect the meninges, ocular, uh, lungs, uh, he hepatospleno candidiasis. Then this is what? UTI. It can cause UTI. Then you have or arthritis, osteomyelitis, septicemia. Then in allergic candidiasis, you have ID reaction. Due to the allergic met, uh, reaction to the metabolites of candida, there can be lesions in the web space of hands and other areas similar to the dermatophyteid reaction. Okay, dermatophyteid reaction. That's why it's called as an ID reaction. It's called as canned ID ID. Canned ID ID. Okay. Candid ID, you can say. Candid ID. ID reaction. Then uh, lab diagnosis we saw in uh, this video. So the specimen collection, direct microscopy, culture on SDA, Sabo U rods, dextrose agar. Species identification, germ tube test, Dalmau plate culture for chlamydospores, chrome agar, sugar assimilation test, sugar fermentation test, etc. Then we saw an immunodiagnosis, antibody, antigen detection. Then we saw enzyme detection, test for metabolites. Then we saw treatment of candidiasis. So now you are a super duper expert in candidiasis, candida. Enjoy, take a break, take a deep breath and it's a bye. Bye bye.